Hey friends, welcome back. We're off on a bike camping adventure today and tomorrow. Currently heading south on the Calgary pathway system to head to the bottom of the city and then I'm gonna try to head west from there. Beautiful sunshine, two day e-bike packing trip on top. If you scroll down to the show notes below, there'll be a link to the ride I did. Taking the uh, recently upgraded skid loader out for its maiden voyage. Two batteries, nice low gear range with that three by three hub I put on. A little mixed surface ride on top. So yeah, hope you enjoy the ride. Well, kind of crazy to think that it took like 35K-ish to get to the edge of the city here. But we're here, and so far so good. Some wind, uh, but right now we're kind of uh, leaving the city and the pathways. I'm gonna hop onto some range roads south of the city. A Little bit of traffic here, but hopefully we'll get a bit further in and it'll be a bit quieter. That is a brute of a climb. Whew. <clears throat> Almost at the top. I think some people might think that <clears throat> e-bike touring is easy, but whew, I wouldn't say that it is because if you are running a fairly ambitious uh, distance goal for the day. You can't rely on the power or the higher modes of the electric bike. Got to keep it in the low mode and grunt it out. And then once we get over the top of this, it's downhill mostly for quite a ways. Hanging out here at the Millerville Racetrack in beautiful Millerville, Alberta. Millerville Racetrack is also home to the Millerville Campground. And uh, it's not the fanciest campground, but it's here. <coughs> and hoping I can find some firewood, maybe have a fire here, but I think I'm gonna stop here for the night. Something like 68K in. Really big wind was just blowing. <clears throat> My legs are really sore, and so I'm not actually sure I could make it to McLean Creek uh, tonight. So this was actually my bailout plan anyway, in case I was feeling like it was uh, maybe bitten off more than I could chew, which I clearly did. And so I'm gonna stay here tonight. <clears throat> just over the yonder there. I don't know if you can see my bike is against the wall. And uh, there's some power there, so I'm going to be able to get a bit of power and make sure that I can uh, make the return journey tomorrow. But yeah, that was pretty tough work. Lots of wind. Holy moly, that was difficult, even with the e-bike. And I didn't really want to use the higher modes because I was thinking that I'd for sure be able to make it to uh, McLean Creek tonight, but... 
<clears throat> I don't even know if I used uh, quite, quite a bit of battery left, but even on the higher modes, I'm not sure that I've got the strength today. So I'm just going to call it a day and uh, hang out here and let the bike catch a bit of charge for a bit. Maybe be able to scope the camp host and uh, get registered. So remember, the, remember kids, when you're making your plans that you have a bailout or at least a second plan, plan B, in case you don't make it to the end of your plan A. All right, picked out a suitable spot and going to set up our stuff and so my stuff. And so I thought, well, since I'm out here and I have this camera, I might as well show you uh, a few of the bits and bobs that I use when I'm out camping. So first of, first of those is going to be my shelter. And so my shelter consists of a tent, of course. Um, but a last couple of years ago, it uh, after a particularly wet um, trip, uh, my shelter system now pretty much always involves bringing a tarp as well. So I have a super light 10 by 10 sill tarp type thing. And uh, I bring it on every trip now because uh, sometimes campsites like this have no shade. Otherwise, <clears throat> other times it's raining and uh, you uh, don't want to hide in your tent the whole, uh, the whole time. So uh, I'm going to set both those up for you and you can kind of check them out. All right, here we go. All right, so tarp set up, and I'm going to say it's probably not one of my best efforts, but based on the fact that I don't have much to work with, hopefully this will work and keep the rain off us if it starts coming in on us. So next up is our my tent. I'm going to find a nice little dry spot or a flat spot over here. All right, so got my <clears throat> my tent set up, which is this little guy here. I think it's a big Agnes, one person, super light. If I was to do another super light tent again, I would want something with the door on the side because getting in and out the end is not so much fun sometimes. It'd be nice to be able to just kind of roll out of your tent, but otherwise that thing's, this thing's pretty awesome. Lots of wind. All right, tent's all set up. Got a little rain shelter. I'm gonna start putting my gear back together here and figuring out what supper is and maybe see if I can do another shot at the uh, camp post one more time and get registered and find some firewood. All right, so sleep system. So my sleep system is comprised of a very comfy, pretty fat, kind of a heavy mattress, but uh, after trying a few different air mattresses uh, over the years, I decided sleep was my friend and I really, really would, I want it at night. I want to be able to rest as well as I can when I'm on the road. And sometimes I found with really thin mattresses, I just felt like it was just a rough sleep and woke up stiff the next day. So I kind of take the hit and I bring a fairly large mattress. And then my um, sleep system is in here and it's basically uh, a bed sheet that fits over this and a, and a quilt um, that snaps onto it. And, uh, and that allows me to stay super warm. It's really quite warm. And, um, and also uh, kind of roll and, and lay on my side without getting call, caught all up in my sleeping bag. And uh, this setup has been amazing. So I'll, I'll show, you, show you a picture of what the, uh, the setup looks like when it's all uh, bolt, bolted together. Okay. So one of the, uh, the best bits of advice I got, and I don't remember who it was that told me it was, um, but was um, figure out whether you're a, a warm sleeper or a or cold sleeper can really help determine uh, how warm your sleeping setup is when you're out uh, camping. And um, early on, I was uh, camping, I was um, bike camping, I was bringing um, sleeping bags that were just too warm. And uh, so I would sweat and then I would get cold at night and I thought, oh, my sleeping bag's not warm enough. And so uh, get a warmer sleeping bag. And what uh, once I figured out that it was, uh, I kind of needed to have like not as warm a setup, um, things got a lot better for me for camping, uh, uh, sleeping at night. And so uh, for me, I run a pretty lightweight setup um, with the understanding in my own mind that if uh, if, uh, if it's going to be really cold, uh, I, I should be fine wearing all the clothes I brought inside my sleeping setup. So that's kind of the way I think about it. But um, here's my kind of setup. And so that's my sleeping bag. And it's um, basically snaps right onto these little guys right here. And the bag itself has um, got baffles all the way, all the way along. So as I'm rolling and tipping and turning all night long, um, it kind of stays in place. There's a, kind of a foot bucket down here, so my feet stay can be sort of tucked in, my toes can be tucked in. And when it's really cold, I just kind of snap it all down and push into the bottom of the bag, and it's pretty great. 
the sheets attached on top of the uh, my air mattress. So figure out your sleep setup. Think about, uh, get some advice and talk to people that do it lots and you can figure out uh, how to be comfortable at night because it really does matter. Yum yum, rice and beans. Fully fed, feeling pretty all right. Decided to actually take down the uh, the uh, um, tarp because uh, the wind blowing through here is pretty savage. I'm glad I chose to stop um, and not push on today because the winds were really bad. <clears throat> and uh, enough so that it uh, kind of knocked over my tarp at one point and one of the poles popped and smoked me in the arm and gave me a nice little hematoma and all kinds of fun stuff. So glad we're just... Looks like the winds are kind of coming off, so hopefully it'll be a calm night. Found the camp host. He was very generous with his uh, wood supply, which is pretty funny and uh, pretty nice. We'll burn some wood here while the sun goes down and maybe have a little, little snack before bed. And that's that. So end of day one. Tomorrow we'll get up, make some coffee and start working our way back towards Calgary. Good morning. This coffee doesn't taste very great, but it tastes pretty good because I'm outside. Last night was so nice. Actually, almost too warm with uh, my simple setup. But uh, good sleep, sort of. First, uh, first few camping trips for me, at least, uh, the poor bod, poor old man's bod, complains a little bit, um, sleeping on the ground. Otherwise it was good. Woke up to the sound of just crazy amounts of bird song when the sun was coming up and all kinds of sounds of birds that aren't in my neighborhood. That was pretty lovely. Now back to the most important part of this program, and that is me drinking my coffee in peace and quiet. Here comes that wind again, it's starting to build in. <clears throat> I think it's gonna affect my plans today. Also coming from the opposite direction than it was yesterday. And we're mobile. That was a nice night. Before we hit the road here, I'm gonna head over to the uh, <coughs> lovely heated toilets and showers. Coffee this morning's doing its work, so we better take care of that before we hit the road. And uh, with the wind feeling like it was uh, kicking up here this morning, again, <coughs> pretty classic springtime in Alberta. I think I'm going to mostly just uh, head pretty straight back on a route that I'm familiar with. Also, my uh, <clears throat> legs were a little bit uh, 
crampy getting out of the tent this morning and so it's probably better to be safe than sorry just get back and get the first uh, weekend on the uh, on the road in the bag Millerville is a great little spot if you're wanting to camp <clears throat> they got firewood like I mentioned showers potable water the campgrounds are pretty rustic they're not really that great but uh, but they're okay and um, you, you do have to book ahead if you're going to come out here on the weekends, but every time I've come out here midweek, there's been nobody here, so you just roll right in. Yeah. All right, well, let's get figured out here. Sure, nice out here. Got to appreciate where you are, right? Pretty great stuff. <clears throat> Almost feels like the wind might uh, shift around for me here on our way. Little red winged blackbird saying hi to me this morning few K in feels good legs are sore from yesterday that's okay just gonna head straight home hop in the tub before that happens more of beautiful Alberta morning Close to the high point for the day, hooray! Oh. Woohoo! The debris is pretty good, but uh, the one thing I'll say about it is if you're in really stiff crosswinds, it uh, tends to want to move around a little bit, or at least uh, it certainly grabs onto your helmet. So, if you're in a straight line, it's pretty good. thing I wish the city had done when they built this ring road was to made a, an overpass right here in the 37th Street side of things because this is the nicest way or was anyway one of the nicer ways to get out of the city <sighs> before they installed this thing the overpass, or sorry, the um, ring road and all the overpasses, all the highway overpasses and all that kind of stuff that they built basically made it a huge barrier to get out, to get uh, south of the city. Hence this little bit of a desire line you can see here from other cyclists that have decided that this is still the better way to go. If, uh, if anyone has <clears throat> suggestions on a nice way to connect to the south end of the city here, please leave a comment for me so, uh, so I can follow it because kind of super bummer that this route is been kind of blocked by the highway development. wasn't so bad. 
pretty all right. Nice wide shoulder, just a few kilometers on the uh, ring road. And yeah, back onto the pathway. Not too far from home now, woohoo. You probably hear that wind maybe buffing around there. Springtime in Alberta. And we're basically back home. North Glenmore Park. A few kilometers to make it back to my abode. I sense a pepperoni pizza in my future. Thanks for coming along on my little adventure. If you have any questions about anything that you've seen in the, uh, in the video, please just leave me a comment and happy to try to answer it for you. Summer's here. Time for you to go after it. If you're looking for routes to um, to tackle that maybe you want to get into bikepacking, you're not really sure where to start, make sure you hop over to our website where we have quite a few routes that are just single, single night overnighters. Not too far, not too difficult for you to uh, test out your gear, see if you enjoy the whole bike camping experience. So yeah, I just popped by the link there on the screen and uh, download one of those routes and go get after it. Happy trails.